As a freelance data analyst, the one thing that I do every year many, many times is starting a new job. So just recently, I started a job as a BI developer with a retirement industry company here in New Zealand. Because I start these new jobs so often, I have to learn how to quickly succeed, impress people and get on top of things in these situations. So in this video, let me share with you three powerful and practical tips that will help you succeed if you are planning to start a new job or get into a new project. Let's get in. By the way, my name is Chandu and I talk predominantly about data analytics, Power BI, SQL and Microsoft Excel on my channel. So if you want to learn more about those things, feel free to subscribe. Now here is the first way that I use to get and succeed in these new jobs and that is to learn about the business. No matter what I do in that work, I want to understand from a holistic perspective what that business is about. This is how I normally do it. I try to have a coffee catch up with a friend or a common connection in the industry before starting the job. That way I can learn a little bit more about how the business works how they make money, what are the key systems and technologies they use. But this is not always possible. For example, for this recent BI developer job, I didn't have any of my prior contacts working in that space. So what I did next is I went to their website, I downloaded their annual report and I just read it. Of course, it's a very big report and there is a lot of detail there. But I kind of skimmed through this just to understand some of the key terminology and how they operate as a business. Next, once I started the work, I spent the first many, many days just learning about the business, understanding how various things work and how it translates to the data world. Because as a BI developer, my job predominantly is to kind of move the data from an older system to the new system and implement some of the business intelligence reporting there. So because of this, I have to know what various tables are and all of that, but that comes next. First, I need to know from the business side of things, what are the key things that they measure, how they operate and what some of the KPIs and uh, terminology really mean. So this is a really key lesson. I use this every time I start a job in an unknown industry or a domain area. I spend the first many, many days just learning about the business. So do that. You can use resources like annual reports, meetings with people internally in the organization or your friends or even AI. For example, there were many technical terms in this new job and I didn't want to ask the people because everybody is already working so busy in the project and they're all kind of really stretched thin. So all I did is I made notes of all the terms that I'm coming across and I would just jump into Copilot or ChatGPT in this case, predominantly Copilot. And I would just ask questions like, hey, what does this mean? What does that mean? And it was quite helpful and gave me some examples. I would ask follow-up questions. Now in real life, if I were to ask these follow-up questions to people, especially the people that I am just starting in a job and I'm meeting them, chances are they might even think, oh, this guy is really dumb. But with AI, there is no judgment. I'm not sure people will also judge me like that, but it's possible that at least some of these things we make up in our mind. With AI, it is incredibly patient. I can just keep on asking the same question in different ways until it kind of goes in my mind. So that's what I've done uh, to understand many of those technical and business terminology. So the, that's the number one lesson, learn about the business, it will help you a lot. The second thing that I use is I view every new opportunity as a potential way to learn new things. So this may not be applicable for everyone, but I think everyone should have this sort of a lens. Instead of viewing the jobs or projects as, hey, I get to make more money, pull back and think, hey, I get to learn new things, I get to meet new people, I get to do new things. This is gonna actually open your mind. It has been doing this for me for many, many years and helps you see the world and the business situation and the project in a completely different light. So my goals, especially these days, uh, because I am not predominantly looking for jobs to earn money, I'm 
fairly well off what i do is i try to see what is the learning potential here and if there is significant learning potential then i say yes to that particular work and i go in uh, with the hopes of learning new things and it has really helped me learn so many things throughout my life and even with this project uh, it's barely been two weeks there and I have already learned a lot about stored procedures, many, many advanced SQL techniques and of course a whole new industry of this retirement slash healthcare industry space which I've not previously worked in and I'm now already, I don't want to say I'm an expert or anything, I'm nowhere near that but I am learning a lot. So uh, it, it's kind of activating a lot of different parts of my mind and connecting those dots and hopefully will make me a better consultant a better person a better trainer and you know keeps me engaged for a while so that's my mindset every new job for me is essentially a new opportunity to learn it could be just learning about the business learning about technology or learning about people meeting new people all of these are learning avenues for me and it really uh, enhances me as an individual so uh, that's how I view them I hope you also view these new things as an opportunity to kind of open completely new doors and expand your knowledge and connections in a different direction. And the third one is starting small. I'm not sure if you have already guessed or not, but I am a huge introvert. If you put me in a room full of people, I am immediately shy and reserved and I don't want to be in that room. So starting new things means potentially being in larger teams with lots of people and all of that. And that really stresses me out. But of course, I push myself to do that simply because there is an opportunity to learn. But because it also freaks me out a little bit, this is what I do. I start small. I don't want to meet all the 20 members of the project team on the day one. Of course, if it is required and it's part of the orientation or whatever, maybe yes. But in general, I like to go and meet people in smaller groups, maybe one or two people, just maybe take one person out for a coffee, talk to them, build the rapport, build the connection and understand how they work and what they do and how it fits into the overall spectrum of things and where I fit in and all of that. Another thing with starting small is many times, especially when starting new things, uh, as a consultant, you will be pushed into pretty much the deep end of the pool and that can be overwhelming and when you are overwhelmed you obviously don't perform well so for me because the first few weeks are really vital to make a good impression and hopefully expand the scope of the work that I am doing as well as give me an opportunity to learn more and contribute more the way I look at it is the first few weeks are for me to start small do one or two things at a time rather than you know do the whole thing and then get a sense of it understand where it fits in and then slowly expand and then become productive so essentially the point that i'm trying to say is the first few weeks are not to be really like oh you made an amazing decision here i am i'm going to be productive from day one instead first few weeks are for you to get your bearings right and then go from there. So for example, in this recent project, I am working on a very large stored procedure and trying to migrate that from an older system to a new data warehouse. Now, because it is such a large and complex program, if I try to do that in the first one week or two weeks, I would obviously fail. So this is what I've been doing. I've been basically taking that stored procedure taking parts of it, just smaller queries and CTEs and sub parts of the program and trying to first test them against the old system and then see how that would fit in the new world and try to test that there until I have got enough clarity about all the smaller parts. And then once those small parts are there, then I'm going to eventually make a slightly bigger chunks and eventually do the conversion. So that's the small uh, starting small part. Again, it helps me incredibly well because um, as a freelance data analyst and a consultant, many times I am put into a situation where basically there is a lot going on already and I'm expected to come in at that point, not from the start of the project, which means I have a lot to inherit. And this actually brings me to the fourth, and this is a bonus trick, and this has been really helpful for me in the recent past, is how I use AI to kind of get on top very quickly. Uh, previously, when I had to do these kind of projects, 
uh, I would get, for example, large data model or 300 Excel files or something like that. And I'm supposed to understand and do that. And because the initial chunk of that work and the complexity is already very huge, it would take me many, many weeks before I could really start contributing. Whereas nowadays what I'm doing is, thanks to AI, I am able to produce some valuable results and insights and contribute to the discussions almost on day one or day two. This is how I do it. I take the parts of the work that are the most confusing, I go to AI and then I say, hey, uh, here is the, for example, piece of stored procedure code. Can you tell me really what is going on here? And, uh, you know, give that. It will give me some examples or some information about it. And then I ask lots of follow-up questions. Many of these questions could be completely dumb or stupid, but I'm new there. So for me, everything is new. So I get the information from AI and then once I understand that, then I can put my consultant hat on and then say, oh, if this is happening and if that is happening, why not try this? So then I bounce those ideas off AI first instead of directly pitching it to the client. I say, what if we do this here? You know, how would that work out? And once I get some valid criticism of that, then I go to the client and I talk to them about these things. So using AI has been like a, real game changer for me especially when i'm getting into newer things so essentially those are the three plus one ways in which i have been able to succeed in new projects i learn about the business i start small and i look at these new things as an opportunity to learn rather than to earn and of course nowadays to use ai so that i can get quickly productive and understand what is going on without feeling lost in a newer situation or newer technology I wish you all the very best with whatever new thing that you have got coming up. It could be a new job, new project, whatever it is, all the very best. And hey, if you really want to learn about data technologies and work with Power BI, SQL or Python or Excel, and you want to learn all of these things, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching this video. And if you have got any other feedback or any other practical ways in which one can succeed in newer situations, drop them in the comments below. I'll catch you out there. Bye.